All right, guys, it is still the dog days of summer here. It's late August, um, but we know fall is right around the corner. Um, at this time frame is when I really like to start creating the mock scrapes, getting them established, getting cameras put on them, all that type of stuff. And I like this time frame for a couple of reasons. One, you know, the bucks are still in velvet for another couple of weeks or so. So it's cool to get the bucks back on camera while they still have their velvet on, uh, just from a photo standpoint. But the bigger reason is we're still just ahead of the time frame where the bucks start really picking up the scraping activity, which coincides with, you know, their velvet coming off. Um, but it, what I found over the years is if I can get ahead of that, I have a better chance of the scrape that I create becoming the bigger communication hub. Um, so I almost have the pick of the location that's that's more advantageous to me, whether that's for trail cameras or for a hunting purpose. I've just found the earlier scrapes that get started or the mock scrapes I create tend to be the more hot locations. So um, that's the biggest reason I want to get out and get them created now before the deer really start creating their own. I get lots and lots of questions all the time about mock scrapes, how to make them, what I use. So I figured I would run down step by step as I'm out doing this, uh, what I look for and what I like to use. Uh, first things first, again, that location. I like to try to have as many things coming together as possible. I don't just like finding one trail and making it on a trail. I want at least two things coming together and this location that I just picked out actually has three. Um, so. I'm standing on a, a east-west trail right now that comes through here. It was old mowed path, but the deer continue to use it and they're cutting at the top end of this food source. There's another one that intersects it, it's just this north and south perpendicular to the one I'm standing on uh, that cuts this field edge. So this is a natural intersection plus we have the food source in the background. So that's kind of the third factor in all this. I'm going to put the camera right here and a scrape off of this overhanging uh, oak branch. So again, three things. I like to look for as many things as possible. If I'm in the middle of timber and I come across a trail, I'll usually walk it until I find another trail coming to meet it or intersecting it or something. I just, just the more you can have going on, the better that spot's gonna be, the more activity there's gonna be, all that type of stuff. So find as many good things, uh, deer related activity that come together as you can when you're looking for these spots. So that's why I have this location picked out. Um, as far as tools that I use, there's a, a couple things that have always been helpful for me. One, a good pair of just pruners. I found find these a lot easier to use than um, like a, a hand saw or anything like that. It's just so much easier clipping leaves, cl clipping branches. Um, that type of stuff. These are just some little hawk pruners. Um, zip ties. The, I, I've actually used two things and zip ties are kind of my second option, but this is for attaching a vertical branch, a, a licking branch. And the, the thing I actually like using the most that I'm out of that I have on order is Hawk makes this, uh, I think it's called Sportsman Rubber Wire. And it's basically just a, you can, you know, cut off a little piece and use it like a twist tie almost. And I've found those to, to be a lot stronger and sturdier than using the zip ties, but the zip ties will work. Uh, sometimes you gotta use two, as you know, you know, these bucks can get pretty aggressive on these branches um, and you don't want them coming down otherwise the scrape usually dies if you don't have that licking branch so those are the the two things i like the rubber wire best but the zip ties which i have today will work as well and the next thing is uh scent so this is a highly debatable topic among hunters um you know, everyone has their opinion on what works best. And I'm sure throughout the country, as you go from area to area, certain things will work differently. But uh, in general, I can tell you what I've had really good luck with. Uh, there's, you know, obviously two options. You have uh, your real options, the ones that were actually taken from deer, or you also have your synthetic options. As far as real options, I used to order a lot of the Smokies pre-oral gland lure with a little dropper on it. Um, I don't have any with me right now, but that always was a nice real option for me. Um, I've since started using a synthetic option just for the standpoint of it 
it tends to last longer and you don't have to take care of it as much as you do the real option. Like I said, it's dog days of summer, it's gonna be over 100 degrees. This stays in my truck, I clip it to my backpack, whatever. This is actually called Scrape Fix, um, just a little powder base synthetic uh, that you can put on the licking branch in the ground. Uh, so this has worked really well for me and I've, I've gravitated towards using this, the synthetic version. Uh, a lot more often the, the deer respond really well to it and it's uh, convenient for sure so um, the biggest thing on the scent you know try different things see what works for you like i said i've tried a lot and a lot of a lot of it i've had good success with um, i think the biggest thing is just using common sense when you're using it you know it's it's august don't put out doe and estrus urine right now um, things like that. If it's preorbital gland lure, know where that goes um, in relation to the scrape on the licking branch. Uh, so things like that. Just using use common sense for what scent you're using, but you know, try different ones and see what works for you. The fourth item or tool that is handy is something to clear the debris with and clear the ground with. It can be a machete. Uh, if you're in a <clears throat> convenient location, which I'm not right now, I'm kind of back in here, but um, a string trimmer works really good for getting down to the dirt and clearing all the weeds out of the way so that's kind of the fourth tool and item you need and then another pretty debatable topic is uh what to use for a licking branch and again i've used a bunch of them i've i've really enjoyed the experimentation side of it all um, but i have my top two items with me um number one for me just overall looking at the years of of trial and error and experience the one that i've had the con most consistent results with has been an oak branch and i have mine cut down here for for this scrape um i just i don't know what it is if it's the the stiffness of it that they like or what but i've just had better luck overall with with an oak branch um, the second most effective option for me has been the vines, like the grapevine. Um, I just, uh, what's nice about these is you can find them pretty readily available. Uh, they hang nice and straight down um, and they don't, they don't wave around too much in front of your camera and call it, cause false triggers or anything. Um, they both work really well. I still use the vines quite a bit, it's just if I have these two sit next to each other, I'm probably gonna take the oak branch. Um, so I'm gonna put that down for now and kind of show you how I prepare the oak branch. When I cut these down, obviously it's gonna depend on your horizontal branch. So I have mine here on this tree. It's actually pretty high up in the air. Um, I'd like it to be maybe a little bit lower, but I'm kind of stuck with what I have at this location. The location kind of trumps it for me. Um, so I had to, cut a decently long oak branch and as far as the species of oak i don't think it matters too much um, i tend to gravitate towards the ones that are a little more wiry like the, the black oaks red oaks pin oaks um, over something that's a little more flexible like a bur oak but i don't think it matters too much um, but when i cut it off i like to leave a little v here just like this something that's going to hang on that horizontal branch and give you something secure to tie to. Um, so I leave that there and then I'll go ahead and trim up all these other branches that are pretty high. One of the biggest things is, you know, as you're trimming this, you're gonna get all these leaves out of here that are potentially gonna be waving in front of the camera. So I want those out of there. But the other thing is too, you know, leaves are gonna fall off um, naturally anyways same thing with your horizontal branch the more you can trim off the more reliable your branch height is going to be so as we sit here in august um, all the leaves are obviously still on but as the leaves start coming off that branch is going to lift up so if, if it's this time of year i like to have my vertical branch uh, hanging down close to my belly button and it'll raise up over you know leaf fall and everything up to around chest height which is about perfect um, if you're hanging it on like a pine tree or something that's not gonna lose leaves then you don't have to worry about that but definitely keep that in mind you don't want that to lift up above deer's uh, a deer's head height to where they're not going to be able to work that licking branch you want to keep it down a little bit 
So I'm gonna finish trimming that up. You know, obviously the pruners make that nice. And then I will go hang it on this. And same thing, I like to try to find another little V that I can put this on. So I'll put it down right there. And I'll probably use two zip ties on this one just to make it nice and secure. Just like that. And so obviously it still has some play, which is nice. I don't want it to be so rigid. It's it's tight enough on there that it's not gonna slip off, but there's still some play with it. And so this setup right here is what I've always found to be the key to a successful mock scrape is you have your horizontal branch and you have something vertical sticking straight down. I don't ever like just leaving it as a horizontal branch and letting the deer kind of, you know, chew off a vertical side. I like to have something very obvious alone sticking straight down and that, uh, that has always worked out really well. So again, belly button height this time of year, as this obviously is gonna raise up quite a bit. I'm gonna get a couple more of these out of the way that I can. Just really make that, make this vertical branch stick out. I really don't have to do too much trimming. I'm already at a good, a good level here. And this will raise up a little bit, but the, it's still going to be at a, a length that the deer can reach. Um, maybe trim these extra couple leaves off of there. And then the next thing I'm going to do is clear the ground. And since we're on a field edge right here, yeah, I don't have to do much. I can just kind of use my boots get that cleared out. I usually try to clear like a maybe a three by three uh, spot on the ground here, expose more dirt for the scent to kind of seep down into. And it's also a visual thing for the deer. And then I'll take my scent and just give it a couple puffs here. And I'll put my camera back here on the trunk of this tree and I could almost guarantee we'll have some activity here tonight. That's pretty much it, it's a pretty simple process. Um, in my opinion, these are the greatest inventory tools. You know, uh, every buck in this area will visit this at, point, at some point here soon. And uh, getting them out early definitely helps with that. Uh, people ask if I wear gloves. Uh, obviously, I don't get too carried away with that this time of year. The only time I'll take a lot of extra precautions is if it's at the middle of the season. I'm trying to move into a buck's core area or something like that. Uh, but I'm not too worried about it uh, with it still being August. Uh, the deer seem to react just fine in my experience. Um, I'm also not one of those guys that goes and refreshes these very often. Usually I just let the deer take it over. I use scent obviously to get it started, uh, let the deer take it from there. Um, you know, again, my experience, you get it out early, get it established, uh, the deer will definitely use it if it's in a good location. So um, I think that's about everything. If I missed anything or you have extra questions, feel free to reach out. Uh, appreciate you guys watching and best of luck.